got in line. Plan Philadelphia, freedom ring, and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, blue, never give up. You represent America. I've been praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. I've some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. The French still fear a war with Great Britain, and without France as an ally, the light on our success will dim even more. The rebels are deserting General Washington's army like rats from a sinking ship. Why should France risk war with Britain to help a struggling band of rebels? We need proof from General Washington that he can defeat the British. She's all ready to print. Good. I'll be seeing you. Oh. <laughs> Hold your horses there, Henri. But there's a ball tonight at Mayor Powell's mansion. Funny. I don't recall you receiving an invitation. Why let a little thing like that stop me? Good evening, one and all. How's Sarah? On her way to visit Abigail Adams in the bustling city of Boston. Lucky girl. I wish I had a family I could visit. Sorry, we're closed for business. But I need to place an advertisement. Oh, no. I spent three hours setting that type. I would not change it for General Washington himself. As a matter of fact, I've been sent here by General Washington. the advertisement he gave me. Captain Alexander Hamilton of the New York Company of Artillery, by applying to the printer of this paper, may hear something to his advantage. 24 words. That will be a one pound sterling, payable in advance. What my junior apprentice means to say is that we'd be honored to run this at no charge to the general. Thank you. I'm very much obliged. Our pleasure. Now this sounds like a mystery. Henri, we'll have to reset the type for the entire page. But what about the ball and all those beautiful ladies? They'll just have to dance without you. Welcome to Paris, Dr. Franklin. Silas Dean, my old friend, good to see you again. How goes your mission to win support from France? Not well, Ben, not well at all. What's all that about? Some sort of celebration? Take a look out your window. Ben Franklin's the most famous man in Europe. Well, I'll be. It is so good to be back in Boston to visit Mrs. Adams, but the city does seem so very changed. Sarah, it's so good to see you again. Is something the matter? The smallpox has returned to Boston. I wanted to write you to tell you not to come, but there was no way to reach you in time. How are you and the children? All fine for now. But perhaps you should return to Philadelphia. I wouldn't think of it. Pox or no pox, I wish to stay with you. It's easy, really. You bow and take the lady's hand like this. Then you twirl her and... <gasps> excuse me what? I'd like to speak to the proprietor of this newspaper. Then you'll have to go to Paris, France. This advertisement. 
what does it mean that I may hear something to my advantage? You're Captain Alexander Hamilton. That's right. That advertisement was placed by General Washington himself. Well, not personally by him, but on his behalf. The Continental Army's encamped in Morristown. That's where the general is. Then that's where I'll have to go. Would you like some company? I've been meaning to find out how the Continental Army's holding up for the winter. That is, if a gentleman such as you doesn't mind riding with someone like me. It would be a pleasure. I'm staying at the inn at the far end of the street. We'll leave first thing tomorrow. This is going to be a great story. I've got to get ready. Now, about those dance steps. Wouldn't you like to impress the ladies? The only thing being impressed around here is some wood. In your arms, for the stove. Now, where were we, Silas? You were about to tell me whether you have any good news from America. Sadly, I do not. Ben, I've worked tirelessly to convince the French government that ours is a cause worth helping. But it's been months since I've heard from Congress. And all this time, Lord Stormont, the British ambassador, fills the court at Versailles with rumors that our rebellion will soon be crushed. We must keep our faith in General Washington. There's something else you need to know. I've secured four large ships loaded with arms and uniforms for our troops. But now, Comte de Bergen, France's foreign minister, has issued an order to prevent them from sailing. What are we to do? Excuse me, I didn't mean to intrude. Edward Bancroft, we last saw each other in England, as I recall. I took your advice, Ben, and hired Edward as my personal secretary. He's the only man in Paris I trust. I wish I had better tidings, Doctor, but King Louis refuses to grant you an audience. Little strokes fell great oaks. I shall take the strategy of attacking these problems one at a time. What do you intend to do first? Finish my bath and enjoy a hot meal. After that, I'll meet Comte de Vergen. That will buy us some time. Such a meeting might be very difficult to arrange. Not for the most popular man in Europe. Who's that you're holding, John Quincy? General Washington. These are my children, and I'll do anything to help them. Mrs. Adams, you'd be making a terrible mistake. I'll be back in a moment, children. I would not be doing my duty as a doctor if I did not warn you against the dangers of inoculation against smallpox. But how could inoculation be worse than the disease itself? It is a new idea, barely understood and quite risky. Those who favor it say that it will give you a milder form of the pox and prevent the most deadly type of infection. But I have seen the inoculation itself cause great illness, even death. First, you and your children must ingest mercury, a poison to your system. You must fast and purge for days. Then, when you are weak and your blood is thin, you must brave the infection itself. It's simply too dangerous. But Mr. Adams underwent the inoculation and survived. He told me the smallpox is ten times more dangerous than the British. All the more reason to avoid the chance of having your children contracted through inoculation. Mrs. Adams, let me go first. I know I'm not a member of your family, but perhaps the children will draw strength from my example. With good weather, we should reach Morristown by the end of the week. And then I will have to face General Washington and explain how my artillery company has been reduced to a mere handful of tired, hungry, sick men. It's a good thing General Washington seems to favor true gentlemen like you. <laughs> What's so funny? I'm no aristocrat, nor ever was. I was born in Nevis in the Caribbean Sea. My father abandoned us, and my mother died penniless before I was 13. I lost my own parents as well. If it weren't for Ben Franklin's help, well, I don't know where I'd be. Mighty oaks from tiny acorns grow, eh, James? I sensed a kinship between us from the very start. We will enjoy this ride, we gentlemen of low birth.
General Howe has assured me personally that the rebellion will be over by spring. The rebels are deserting General Washington's army like, forgive the expression, rats from a sinking ship. I even have it on good authority that this Benjamin Franklin fellow fled the colonies in such haste because he was caught stealing from the American treasury. Merci beaucoup, Lord You may be assured I will convey this news to His Royal Highness, King Louis. On behalf of the British Crown, I would be most... Good evening. <gasps> I don't believe it. Oui, Sacre bleu. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. <laughs> Coat de Vergennes, Ben Franklin at your service. Dr. Franklin, what a surprise. Welcome to Versailles. A man of my years is happy to be welcomed anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Permit me to introduce Lord Stormont. He was just telling us that you left America under rather hurried circumstances. It was merely a rumor. Though I am but a humble man, I do know this. The truth is one thing, Stormont is another. <laughs> Touché, Dr. Franklin. Let us talk privately for a moment, Doctor. I will come directly to the point. I am the foreign minister of the most powerful nation in Europe. Why should France risk war with Britain to help a poor, struggling band of rebels? Because our cause is the cause of all mankind. We are fighting for your liberty when we defend our own. A lofty sentiment, I am sure, though I don't think King Louis would think very highly of it. Then tell His Majesty this. The new United States control immense wealth through trade. Trade that could be redirected to France under the right circumstances. It's no secret France and Britain are on the verge of war, but we can treat each other like families. If yours were to help ours now, we would surely help yours later. And what would you like my French family to do right now? Release Mr. Dean's four ships. Let them sail to America to replenish the Continental Army. And that is all? I told you I was humble. We shall see, Dr. Franklin. Are you all right, Sarah? Should we go inside? No, the fresh air is good for me. I do believe the inoculation is working. I received another letter from my John today. Congress has returned to Philadelphia. He so wishes he could be here with us. It must feel good to read his letters. Sometimes I close my eyes and imagine him there in the room with me. Have you heard from your father? Not for a very long time. He will write you, I am sure. And then I will close my eyes and imagine him beside me. <coughs> Sarah? <coughs> Sarah, are you all right? <sighs> Sarah! A pulse is beginning to race and a fever is rising. What about you and your children? Charles is quite ill, but nothing like Sarah. Does she have family close by? None, I suppose, but us. Tend to her closely. With God's blessing, her fever will break. Without it... are bad all over. Little food, not enough shelter for the soldiers, let alone their families. And smallpox. I've seen the signs of it before. This isn't what I expected after our victories at Trenton and Princeton. The conditions of war care little for victory or defeat. I found out General Washington staying at Arnold's Tavern by the town's green. I suppose the moment of truth has arrived. <laughs> You've made quite an impression, Ben. I understand that because of you, the French have coined a new word for telling a lie. Stormontaire. The poor fellow asked for it. And your likeness is being sold all over France. The rumor at Versailles is you've made King Louis jealous with your popularity. The last thing I want is to offend another king. 
Comte de Vergennes' secretary is here and requests an audience. By all means, show him in. That's enough for today, Jacques. Merci. Dr. Franklin, Count de Virgin wishes you to have this. Tell me it's good news. Virgin still won't let your ship sail, but he stands ready to advance three million livres to us if we keep it under the strictest secrecy. But why not let free the ships? Because the French still fear a war with Great Britain. My attempt to bluff the French has worked well so far. Now we need proof from General Washington that he can defeat the British. Keeping this secret will be very difficult. There are British spies everywhere. I don't like this, Ben. We need those ships. Patience, my friend. We'll stick to my plan until good news arrives. I've gotten them all, and as I've read them, I've watched you grow into a strong young woman. Do you really mean that? I'm not worried about you now, Sarah. I love you, Father. There's a clearing up ahead. Look. Come with me. We'll go together. I've been in France now well over a month and enjoy a surprising celebrity that I have endeavored to use to our advantage. What I lack, however, is any word from Congress on the fate of our new United States. Is there any good news at all? Without it, I fear France will soon call my bluff. And without France as an ally, the light on our success will dim even more. Gentlemen, Martha has asked me to apologize for the meager quality of our surroundings. I know you're all used to much finer accommodations. Now, what do we have here? <clears throat> Captain Alexander Hamilton of the New York Company of Artillery at your service. Yes, Captain Hamilton. I take it you saw my advertisement. Yes, sir, Your Excellency. And if it isn't young James, how goes the newspaper business? Couldn't be better, General, now that you've shown General Howe a thing or two. Hmm. Captain Hamilton, we must talk. If this is about the men in the artillery company, Your Excellency, I can explain. Captains and kings need never explain anything. That was fine work your men did at Princeton. Thank you, Your Excellency. Captain Hamilton, I placed that advertisement because I would like you to join the Continental Army and serve as one of my aides to camp. I don't know what to say. That is... I would prefer to fight on the field of battle, Your Excellency. I understand your desire, but your gifts are needed here, now. Have you a family, Captain? None to speak of, sir. Then you will find one here. Martha and I look upon each man at this table as our own kin. And I assure you, your colleagues will look upon you as a brother. Gentlemen, may I present the newest member of our family, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> Yes? Ben! Mail has arrived from America, and the news is good! Washington's won surprise victories at both Trenton and Princeton! I told you, my friend, that one must have faith in General Washington. Dr. Franklin, Mr. Dean, Comte de Vergen just had this delivered. 
Zhen congratulates his American family on news of their notable victories. He's lifted the order blocking your ships. They're free to sail to America. You did it, Ben. You outbluffed the English long enough for good news to arrive. This is one letter I'm happy I won't have to send. Mrs. Adams? The fever's broken. I was so afraid we were going to lose you. I was so far away. And then, I know this sounds odd, my father helped me back. Everything will be all right now. Soon, General Washington will have the whole army inoculated. Can you imagine a world without smallpox? I'm afraid my imagination is not quite so vivid. It's the kind of scientific progress Dr. Franklin always talks about. Perhaps you should take the inoculation yourself. Would General Washington let me? Spring will be here before we know it, and he's going to need every strong man he can find, even those who write for newspapers. Good luck to you, Lieutenant Colonel Hamilton. It's not official yet, but thank you anyway. Well, I had better find His Excellency. You can't imagine how many letters he has us write. <laughs> <laughs> 